This is Puck Year, New Zealand's hockey podcast with hosts Logan Swinkles and Joe Jury, bringing you the best stories and interviews from down under. Uh, it's been a long time coming. He's been a, a very long time supporter of uh, Pakia Podcast as well. Uh, joining me all the way from London, UK is Liam Stewart. I know things are obviously tough right now, buddy, but how you been doing? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. And uh, you're right. It is a long time coming. Shut up. But... Uh, Things are good, man. I mean, as good as they can be. You just try and stay positive. We're in a full lockdown until I think like March. So another oh. month and a half here. Um, but, you know, things are good. Just working out, playing video games. Uh, <laughs> the lady's working, luckily, from home. So uh, she's bringing home the money right now. But, you know, other than that, things are good. And, you know, just taking it as it comes. Bringing home the money. And if you hear any laughs in the background, that is uh, your lovely Lady Bella, by the way. Yep. Uh, so going in and out of lockdowns, as the UK has been doing basically for the last 12 months, have you managed to get any hockey in uh, with the Lightning? Uh, we So the first lockdown, not a lot was happening because we weren't considered elite uh, sportsmen, I guess, because um, hockey's not that big over here obviously um and then once the premier league started up with no fans and they did all that i think they started looking towards other sports and then finally they granted us elite status i guess you'd say and uh finally we started practicing again and we were like well fuck we can only practice for so long and then Mm. and not have anything to show for it and then uh the owners of Swindon Wildcats, my team, Milton Keynes, um, who else was it? Sheffield Steel Dogs. Yeah, I think it was us. And then put together like a little streaming series, no fans, all behind closed doors. So big ups to them. But after that, we went into another lockdown. Um, and, you know, the. COVID rates were rising and we just, we just figured, you know, there's no point in trying to make something out of nothing, but, uh, it was, it was good when we could play. Um, yeah. and, uh, it was a good series. I think we only won one game, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> what but, was that um because if you stream the whole thing and i mean you know at that point hockey fans in the uk would have been pretty starved for some action so was it just all hype and everyone was excited to have you guys back yeah it was because we were the only and to be fair hockey in the uk is huge but it's like a little percentage of us but that little percentage is massive on like twitter mainly just Twitter and like Facebook. But uh, we were the only hockey playing um, at that time in the UK. So it was pretty big for us. And we got all like, we got teams from around like England, uh, Scotland, uh, and like Ireland. We got all their fans to click into our game and all that. So it was pretty cool to see the support from everyone around, you know, the whole country. Um, And we wanted to make more out of it, but it just didn't seem very doable at the time. And yeah, just financially wise, I think it was just, you know, struggling, but, um, hopefully we kind of come back in a couple months from now and maybe play again, but I don't know. And, uh, speaking of, uh, you know, UK leagues like that, um, prior to, you know, the shit storm that was 2020, um, (laughs) you asked me before we started, before we started this record, uh, Liam asked me if he was allowed to swear, boom, there we go. We're, we're even now, um, more, uh, imports were coming to the NZHL from those UK leagues. You know, you've been one of them. Uh, you've had Ross Venus, Adam Goss, so many awesome players. What do you think attracts those guys and yourself to, you know, to come to this part of the world and play in New Zealand? Well, I mean, I think a main thing is, especially for the UK, like when you live in the UK, we, I kind of realize it now because I've never really lived here full time. Like I have been doing the past like year and a bit, mm. but 
UK people only go to Spain and back. They go to like Tenerife, Ibiza, and that's about it. Yeah. So when they hear of a chance to like have the full on package of being able to like go to New Zealand, like you get stuff paid for, which is unreal and explore another side of the world. I think that's a big, like, Oh shit. Like never maybe get that chance again, especially with like COVID hitting like shit. I wish I took that chance earlier in my career, but like (laughs) guys like Ross Venus, he's a big travel kind of guy. And he, uh, I was actually meant to go with him to, uh, Christchurch, but I was like, you know what? I just wasn't right, I guess. And yeah. uh, man, dude, Red Devils fans are going to be heartbroken here. <laughs> I know, I know, because we were talking about it for so long, and I was like, "Fuck!" Like, I want to go, like, because that's that's home to me as well, like just New Zealand in general. But um, I was like, "Yeah, I just don't think it's going to work out." And uh, and then I got in. Well, a year later, so I got injured, concussion problems, was out for a couple months, and then Mike McRae. I'm sure you guys know about him. Um, he messaged me. He was like, hey, you want to give hockey a go again? And I was like, oh, what a perfect opportunity to try and play some <laughs> games again, go back home for a bit, you know, travel, which I didn't even do because I just stayed in Queenstown because it was so much fun. But mm. um, the, he sold it pretty well. Uh, uh, when I woke up in the morning, I was looking over, what, how do you say it? Like Wakatipu? Just making sure I say it right. Yeah, walk it to Yeah, okay. Um, And you woke up and you just looked out on the balcony and you're looking over the lake and you're like, oh, shit. Like, Mm. there's no way this is real. I was living with Alex Murray and every day he called it a glitch. He was like, oh, this is a glitch when you wake up every morning. Like, this is a joke. (laughs) And uh, I think it's just, you know, sometimes you just got to say yes and just go for it. But – there's a lot of guys that have been asking me now now after my first year playing in New Zealand, they're like, hey, does Queenstown have any room for guys to come over? And I was like, I don't know, because they're pretty set with their imports. I mean, I'm probably – I'm not an import, but um, they're like, I'm like, last for teams in like Auckland, Christchurch, Dunedin, because Dunedin was a fun night out to be fair. Um, but they're all – everyone's, you know, chomping at the bit to – go and play some hockey in New Zealand and travel a little bit as well. All right. Well, uh, we'll get back to talking about um, New Zealand hockey uh, in a minute, but we both share uh, a common passion that I think's helped us get through last year a lot. And that is, of course, uh, gaming. Um, we talk about the Disco Crew. You're wearing the top right now. It's a name that could be used for so many things. Fashion label, your Twitch channel, fan club. Uh, but when you started streaming games on Twitch during the lockdown, like what drew you to that scene? I didn't realize how much I enjoy gaming until gaming came onto the scene. You know what I mean? Like gaming used yeah. to always be like, all right, you game and then you kind of keep it to yourself if you like, not, I guess you could say like study video games. But like <laughs> once everyone, once Twitch came out and like people started doing that more, everyone was gaming. I was like, you know what? I might as well. I love it. I love play, I play video games all day because it's all I can do. Um, and uh, sorry. And yeah, I was like, you know what? Fuck, I might as well just give this a shot. I tweeted it out because Twitter obviously over here is pretty big. And people are like, yeah, do it. Like, you know, go live, do this and that. And I'm sh- I'm terrible at video games this is the best part. But when you started your channel, I mean, when I came across it, you were playing Warzone, like basically everyone Every in the world. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are, I mean, aside from Warzone, like what are some of the other games that you've enjoyed streaming? Uh, I mean, honestly, some of the most fun times we've had streaming was when Bella was playing Spyro. <laughs> so like we, we did the whole like disco crew kind of game. And then I was playing Warzone, FIFA. I play some Chell. And that's about it because that's what people are obviously FIFA for the UK people hockey for the, that little percentage of, um, you know, hockey fam around here. And then Warzone was just the game I enjoyed because I just love the trying to come first and everything, even though it wasn't high kill games, but uh, some of the most fun times we had was when Bella was playing a week. They, they came up with it. The disc crew came up with Spyro the Spooner 
because that's her last name. <laughs> and uh, that's what we, and we started playing that. And that, Great. honestly, that, that game, oh, it's so frustrating. Because yeah, it's so I, simple, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It's like X, X and triangle and just look around. But it's like, that's all you have to touch. And it's like, how the fuck am I supposed to do anything else? It's like, I'm used to used to using all my fingers on the controller, but you're only using your thumb and your left thumb, your right thumb, mm. left thumb. Well, it's only two, but, um, but yeah, I think Spyro was one of the most fun times I've had kind of going back to that era as well. Just such a simple game. And you're like, yeah, like you play like Mar- I wish I, I want to, if I get back into it, I'm going to stream like mario kart and like all those kind of games as well which is just like just fun games to be around yeah I you like say. i had a lot of i had a lot of fun with uh, those kind of games yeah. and like i know what you mean like games these days are very like heavily complex um yeah. with their like game mechanics and their like controls and everything and then you jump back into something like spyro or mario or sonic and you're just like oh, or like shit. crash bandicoot like, yeah, you're like, was oh. this game this hard when I was a kid? Like, I just, I can't remember. Because, like, on the boss <laughs> levels, you'd be like, oh, dad. Or uh, my dad couldn't do it. But I, who <laughs> would I ask for? I don't even know who I'd ask for. I would love to see Rod Stewart playing in the oh, Spire. <laughs> fuck, I don't know. I'd love to see him just hold a controller. But, um, yeah, like, those games were the most, like, Tony Hawk was fun. That was my favorite game growing up. Uh, no, not surprised there, but uh, we'll, we'll get back to the hockey talk now because this is a hockey podcast, but we do love a bit of gaming here on yeah. uh, on Puck here. When you did come here, I mean, it's something that we probably haven't really seen before, but you know, you did get a little bit of uh, media attention outside of, oh, let's say Puck here, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, you had Women's Day, you had uh, yeah. TVNZ, you had Seven Sharp, you did a thing with Hilary Barry, who was like an icon <laughs> herself. Yeah, um, I remember that. Like... Yeah, like I've I've worked with her for years and uh, she's like one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. But for a hockey player to come play in the NZHL is just something we don't normally see. So when, when you were getting that media attention, like what were the Stampede guys making of that? Uh, well, like I'm used to it. I yeah. don't like, I was just from like, you know, who my mom and dad are. Like I'm, I don't really care for it, you know, like I'll do it. Um, yeah. But that hit, oh, what was it? Barry? Hillary? No. Hillary Barry, yeah. Hillary Barry. Yeah. yeah. The, it was the funny, that was the best. That was because she was on the ice, wasn't she? And there were guys shooting pucks at her, not shooting, passing pucks at her skates because she, and it was the funniest thing, man. But they didn't, they didn't heckle me like they did, as you do in all sports. It's like, oh, you've big shot over here, blah, blah, blah. But, <laughs> you know, it was just kind of like, like, all right, he's on our team and let's just kind of have fun with it. And that's kind of what you need to do. You can't really give anyone shit for it, but they kind of joined in on the fun. She was interviewing me. They were shooting pucks at my skates. They were passing pucks at her. And then at <laughs> one point in the interview, I think she looked over and was like, can you stop doing that? Or something like that. And uh, <laughs> that was probably one of the funnier times because we were just all joking around. But all that other stuff, like I just enjoyed doing it because it grows the – I don't want to say just for me, but like it grows the game as well down in New yeah. Zealand and uh, people in the UK find out about it. A lot more players found out about it. They were asking me like, what's the season like? How's the hockey? Is it good to stay in shape? And I was like, it's all that. Like it got me in shape for coming to the UK and, mm-hmm. you know, I thank Queenstown for, you know, getting me in shape, even though there was a lot of boozy nights. And uh, I mean, the score sheets, showed it as well i mean you ended that year league mvp finals mvp you guys won the virgil cup team mvp <laughs> i'm just listing them off man you got 33 points and then you had whole colin mcintosh actually outscored you with one he less did. game as well he is an unreal player you had him obviously you got captain matt schneider just an unreal team uh amongst all of that after that big season you had with the Stampede, um, obviously did well to get you back in the shape for the UK. Was that was that starting to get you any interest from the uh, Australian teams? Did any of them knock on your door? Uh, to be fair, they've they were one of the first leagues that showed interest, like just throughout my playing years. Uh, 
and there was there was like I think is it Canberra? Yeah, CBR the Brave. Yeah, see the Brave. Yeah, yeah, they were like all like would be interested in coming playing at at the time. You know, like I would look back now, I was like, fuck, like man, I wish I would have. But mm-hmm. uh, at the time, it just wasn't right. I was coming out of junior and from Spokane, and I was like. There's no point really because I was training every day. I was getting ready for going to play like in the ECHL and whatever. And, uh, but after my first year in Queenstown, like, yeah, a couple teams came and asked me, but it's, I think I'd rather stay in New Zealand, I guess you could say, because I had a, such a fun time. And yeah, the overall league is, it's a good league. It's fun and uh, good schedule as well. Like, it's not too hectic. And uh, Queenstown was just a good place to be. It was just fun. Harking back to that seven sharp piece, uh, there was one really funny bit where uh, That's what it was, you, you had made you, yeah. you had made the uh, New Zealand team to play in the Winter Games. Yeah, and uh, you reve- <laughs> you revealed in that interview that you hadn't actually told your mum yet. Oh so, yeah, nah. Yeah. So did you wait? I, I have to know, did you wait until she saw that on TV or did you break the news to her as soon as you could? <laughs> I actually can't remember if I waited or not, <laughs> but I remember like, I think it was like a week went by and I was like, oh yeah, I'm not like, I'm playing for New Zealand. And because I told her that like, I don't want to like, not, not tryouts, but like just kind of camp was going on, I guess you could say, like we were training and that. I was like, oh yeah, I'm training with New Zealand, like this and that. We play Australia in like the winter games. She was like, oh cool, like let me know how it goes. And I just never let her know. And then <laughs> I'm not, I can't remember. I, I wish I, I wish I knew. I wish I could go back and see the text, but I probably didn't. She probably heard it from someone else first. Because to me, like I don't, I don't think of it like it's me just doing like, I guess you'd say like my job. I guess, or just yeah, kind of doing, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. doing what you're supposed to do and like not thinking anything of it. And then it's like, Oh, we won. Then I'll tell her. And it's exciting. <laughs> but no, she was, she was super excited because obviously she's from New Zealand. Um, and she was happy to see the, the black and white fern as well. And she was, that's all she ever wanted to see. She was happy when I made GB, but I think for mm-hmm. her seeing the hometown colors, she was super excited about that. That is really cool. What about, I mean, that's, that's awesome, you know, for your mom, but then say for yourself, what was that like for you putting the, that black jersey on for the first time? Uh, it was pretty cool, man. Cause I, I never thought I'd have like a chance to, I guess you could say mm-hmm. like obviously playing for GB and obviously like the double IHF rules that you have to take certain time off and do this and that. I was like, Oh, it'd be cool to play for New Zealand, but that chance will never kind of come about. Well, it's not it's not like a double H F sanctioned no. yeah, event, exactly. so yeah. it, it doesn't yeah, so it doesn't you know abide by those rules. So. so I wouldn't have screwed anybody over by pulling a jersey over or anything. But I was I was super excited, and the boys were super nice as well. Like we had a good time, just play, like around the room and all that. But you know, we ended up playing well, and uh, it was a fun series. To be fair, yeah, it was. You could tell there was some heat there, and. Uh, yeah those are the best kind of games when you kind of, you know, there's a little fuck you, fuck me contest going out and it's like, <laughs> all right. And we, you know, we came to play and we lost this. Was it the second? Yeah. We lost the second game, but or no, do we play three games? Uh, three games. I think from memory, New Zealand won the first two, lost the last one. Yeah. Won the I first two. Yeah. That up. Lost the last one. And those, those yeah. are always the worst to play in. Cause you're like, we already won. Yeah, but we got to play a third game. So how do we take yeah. it? Do and, we just kind of like and that's, that's when guys? the Australians really come out swinging. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, "Hey, we can't win, so we're gonna try and injure guys." And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> like, hey, I'm about to go back to the UK and play hockey. I'm not trying to get injured here." But like, they were all good about it, and it was still fiery. We we're all laying the body, this and that, and uh, it was fun, man. It was a good time. To win kind of two championships like that, I guess you could say. One for your team, one for your country, and that was fun. Uh, Disco, it's been a ton of fun having you on the podcast finally. Um, 
one day when you come back down to New Zealand, we'll get you in face to face in the studio yeah. and we'll just have an awesome time. But uh, until now, man, I hope you and Bella and, uh, you know, all your friends and family and that just stay safe. I know things are shit in the UK at the oh, moment, but I just can only hope they get better. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.